Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will enter a reversing entry related to unearned revenue into QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course, which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are on the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to be looking at reversing entries, which are reversing adjusting entries in order to talk about reversing entries and how they will work. Let's first look at a report by going to the reports down here on the left side. We're going to go into the balance sheet report. So we will select the balance sheet. Within the balance sheet, we'll change the date range to that range that we are working on, which is 01012120022821. That is January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021. And run that report. Now, when we do the adjusting process, those are going to be those adjusting entries at the end of a period at a cutoff date, typically being the end of a month or year, in our case, the month of February. So our cutoff date is February 28th. We're doing adjusting entries in order to make the financial statements correct as of the cutoff date. And in doing so, we have one specific goal, and that's to make the financials correct on an accrual basis. But we have another goal, of course, which is just to enter the data in an efficient way. And those two goals are often done by different departments uh, or at least in different cycles or processes. So once we do the adjustments, sometimes we might want to set up another process in order to um, allow those two processes to be different and not have the adjusting entries mess up the normal functioning of uh, the accounting process. So for this, we have the adjusting journal entry that we're going to be wor working on. So we first need to know what the adjusting entry was and then reverse it. Now, the adjusting entry for unearned revenue, as we discussed when we did the unearned revenue adjusting entry, is a little unusual in that uh, we're, we're in this case, we're using QuickBooks in a bit different way than you might see in a textbook. The unearned revenue being something that we had to add in the adjusting process because we increase this and it's a liability account for this uh, unearned revenue. And the reason we had to add it here is because we had put it in relating to a customer into a normal um, accounts receivable. So it was in a negative receivable here and we pulled it out of the receivable and broke it out into a liability account. The reason we put it into the receivable account is because it kind of logistically makes sense for us to group up the receivables because then we can track it by customer. But it's not exactly correct on a financial statement basis. Therefore, when we correct the financial statements or make the financial statements, we should correct the financial statements by breaking out uh, the unearned revenue. If we were working a book problem, then the unearned revenue typically is something that accumulates upward as we receive payments that we have not done work for yet. Then we do the work and we adjust the unearned revenue down to the work that has been done. So there's kind of two different types of issues uh, that could be involved in the unearned revenue. In our case, we got a deposit from a customer and we entered that deposit as a negative receivable. In order to get a better idea of that, let's go to the customer balance detail report. So we're going to go back to the reports on the left side. We're going to go to the customer balance detail report and see what we have there. We're going to change the dates up top of that report to a custom date range. And that date is going to be the end of February. So we're going to make it 022821. And we will run that report. So here's the report that we have. We've got all of our customers listed down here. And if we scroll down to the bottom, then we'll see uh, what we're talking about. Here is the item. Here's our original payment that we got before we did the work. And before we did our adjusting entry, that's all we had. We had this negative receivable, which isn't correct because uh, it, it it's making our receivable go down by 300. And it shouldn't be. But what it should be happening is a liability should be going up by 300. We like to do that because then once we have the invoice, it'll match up nicely on this report by customer and we'll see the customer invoice match up to the payment under string music, which is perfect. But until that happens, it's not quite right. Once it does happen, it will be right. 
So we did an adjusting entry to fix it here. So we did this and fixed it and we, and we said it's back to zero and we made a liability of it. And so if we select that item, here's what the journal entry looks like. There it is. Now uh, we need to, to not mess up the normal process. How This is great. I'm going to close this back out for the financial statements because this number is actually the correct number. It shouldn't be $300 lower and we should have a liability. But from back to the logistical standpoint, um, we would rather have an invoice match up to this amount and have this amount disappear at that point in time. So one way that we could do that is we can do what we call a reversing entry. We'll just reverse this exact journal entry as of the first day of the next time period. And that'll basically put it back where we want, meaning where we got everything the way we want it as of the financial statement date. And then the first day after it, we're going to reverse it and go back to where we were at before we made that adjustment, which is not quite right, but will be right once we issue the actual invoice. So once again, let's take a look at this journal entry. And all we're going to do is reverse this. So we increased the accounts receivable and uh, with a debit or we debited the receivable and we credited the unearned revenue. Reversing it, of course, we will just do the opposite of that. We will debit the unearned revenue and credit the receivable, but we'll do so on the first day of the following month, March 1st. So let's close this out. Let's do that adjusting entry. We're going to scroll up top. We're going to go to this plus icon up top and we're going to select the journal entry. So we're selecting the journal entry and we're going to make this a journal entry as of the first day of the following month, 030121. So that's uh, March 1st, 2021. Now we are dealing with debits and credits here. We're not going to use a register even though there's only two accounts because one, we typically do use um, a journal entry rather than a register for these types of, of transactions. And two, uh, the accounts receivable account's a little bit tricky. It has a couple things in there that are a little bit uh, tricky, including the fact that we have to include a customer, which kind of muddies the waters to use registers. So we're going to do a journal entry here. To do this, what we're going to do is say the accounts receivable is actually going to go down because we're going to say that we have a negative receivable. So accounts receivable is a debit balance account because it's an asset. And typically to make something go down, we do the opposite thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be a credit. So the credits typically go on the bottom. So that we'll stick with the convention here and put this on the bottom. It's going to be, un, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be accounts receivable. <laughs> accounts receivable will be the account. And the amount of the account will be 300. And it's going to be a reversing entry. Type in reversing entry in the memo. And then the debit, the top account or the debit account is going to be unearned revenue. We already know it's going to be a debit because uh, we credited the accounts receivable. But we also know that unearned revenue has a credit balance. And we need to make it go back down to zero. And the way to make something go down is to the opposite thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case would be a debit so we'll select the drop down and we're going to type in unearned revenue so we're going to type in unearned revenue tabbing over that's going to be a debit and then we're going to say that the name is going to be once again the description of reversing entry now the accounts receivable we we do have to have a name down here or it will not let us post it and if we want to see what's happening on that subsidiary ledger we do need the customer account the subsidiary ledger being the customer balance detail. And I believe it was string music that uh, was the customer that we were dealing with. So string music is our customer. Got to have that in the receivable or it probably will not let us post. Not needed on the owner and revenue side because this account isn't applied to specific customers in the same way that a receivable account is. So let's go ahead and save this and then go to our reports and see if it does what we think it should do. So we closed out that journal entry and now we're going to go to the reports on the left side and take a look at the balance sheet first. So we're going to go to the balance sheet and see what we have. So let's look at our normal date range first. The dates will be from 010121 to 022821, January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021 and run that report. We scroll down, we got that accounts receivable account. Once again, the 11,274, selecting that item and scrolling down. Then we will once again see that journal entry 10, in my case, $300. If we scroll back up and go back to the uh, report summary and look at the unearned revenue side of things, we have the $300 still on the books. 
Now we're going to look at one day later. So we're going to go back up here and change the date. I'm just going to select the plus one time to go to February or uh, March 1st, 2021, and run that report. And if we scroll back down, then we see the accounts receivable changing, 10974 If we select that item, then scroll down. We should see the reversing entry here. And you'll note that that just basically pulls it back out. So we've reduced the total in the accounts receivable back down for that item, just basically reversing the exact thing uh, that we put in in the adjusting entry. Scrolling back up, if we look at the other side, going back to the report summary, and then scrolling down to unearned revenue, we then have zero in unearned revenue. If we see the detail then, we can see the activity. The 300 went on the books at the end of the month, so, to, so that we were correct as of the cutoff date. And then the first day after, it was reversed so that it's back down to zero, and it's really being recorded in the accounts receivable as we had at the beginning, as is good logistically, if not completely correct, uh, from a uh, accrual standpoint. So now let's go to that one other report and check this out one other way by going to the reports on the left side. We want to go to the customer balance detail. And we're going to keep, I'm just going to keep the dates here because it's going to keep all the activity. And so we'll keep all the activity, including through March. And if we scroll back down, we see then the original payment we had and then the 300 adjusting journal entry. And then we had the reversing journal entry. And so remember what happened here, the payments, what really happened. Here's us getting $300 for a guitar we haven't yet produced, and so there's no invoice to match it to. Here's us uh, reducing that in order to make the liability and bringing it back down to zero. And here's us, as of the first day of the next month, basically putting us back to where we started at so that we can run forward uh, logistically correctly from here. And everything from this point is not quite right, but will be once we enter the invoice, when we, once we get the guitar and, and ship it then we'll apply the invoice out here and it'll match up nicely and everything will work well. Hello, in this presentation we will enter a reversing entry for an adjusting entry that was made for unearned revenue within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We're going to be talking about reversing entries, specifically a reversing entry having to do with an entry made to unearned revenue and in so doing talking a bit about what reversing entries are why they would be needed and what unearned revenue is and why it is needed if you have the backup to this point you can restore that by going to the file and restore the backup we're going to have the open windows open over here so you're going to go to view and open windows in order to open the open windows we currently only have the home tab open to open the home tab, you go to the company and home page. We're going to be reversing an unearned revenue journal entry that was made as an adjusting process. In order to understand what that is, we're going to first go to the balance sheet and see where the unearned revenue has been entered. So we will go to reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial and scroll down to the balance sheet. We're going to change the dates up here in the date ranges to the range we are on, which is 01012120228 and say OK. Here is our information. The journal entry that we are looking at is in the liability section where we have this unearned revenue of $300. What we have done is increased the liability of $300 and taking it out of the receivable account. So the other side of this transaction is up here in the accounts receivable. If we double click on that, we see the 300 here, the other side going to unearned revenue. Double clicking on that, here's the entry that we made in order to do that. If we close this out, close this out, back to the balance sheet. One more report to see what we have done and why we have done it. We're gonna go to reports up top, we're going to go to customers and receivables and scroll down to the customer balance detail. Going all to the bottom of this report, all the way to the bottom, we see the string guitars and we see this payment of the $300. That $300 wasn't being applied to anything and our journal entry here 
then created a positive $300 to net that up out to zero. In essence, we took this negative amount, increased the total accounts receivable by it, and then transferred the balance to a liability unearned revenue. Why? Because this $300 represents a payment from string guitars as a deposit on a guitar they have not yet received. And within QuickBooks, it's best for us to enter that as a payment within the customer section so that when we later on create an invoice, it will match it up to that invoice. However, for accrual accounting, it's not exactly right because it creates a negative receivable, meaning it reduces the receivable at this point when really it should be increasing a liability, that liability unearned revenue. So at the end of each month, we want to fix that. We want to fix that and show it properly when we report the financial statements. Therefore, we increased the uh, accounts receivable by that 300, bringing that balance for string guitar, string music down to zero. And then we put it into the liability. That works for the financial statements. That makes our financial statements correct, meaning it reports the correct liability and it reports the correct uh, accounts receivable. However, we this system works well for QuickBooks. So what we want to do now is after the date that we make the financial statements, we want to reverse this entry that we just made and go back to the system that, that QuickBooks is using for the normal day-to-day -day process so that when we do eventually make the invoice to tie out to this payment, it will tie out properly. So now that we have everything correct, if we go back to the balance sheet, on the balance sheet as of uh, 228, meaning scrolling down, we have this $300 balance here. As of that date, as of the first date of the next month, we're going to go ahead and reverse that item uh, so that we're back to where we were before that so that QuickBooks can run the way QuickBooks wants to run. So we're going to make a journal entry, uh, in essence, that will reverse this transaction. It's a reversing entry for the unearned revenue. And normally to do that, we would go to customers at the top and we, we would go, I'm sorry, we would go to company at the top and make a journal entry and we'd have to reduce the unearned revenue. Uh, we would do that with it's a credit balance account. So we would do that with a debit and then we would credit the accounts receivable. However, we're going to try to do that. We will do this without doing debits and credits. Therefore, we're going to choose this account unearned revenue within the register and use the registers to record this adjusting entry. Let's do that. We're going to go to banking up top. We're going to go down to use register. We're going to choose not the checking account, but scrolling down to the register we would like to use, which is the liability register. And we will go to the unearned revenue, unearned revenue and OK. So here is the transaction we had prior as of the end of the month. We are going to make this as of 030121 the first day of the next month. And we're going to do the opposite thing to it. So last time we increased this account, this time we're going to decrease this account and reverse this out. The other account will be accounts receivable. Accounts receivables, the other side of this transaction. And note that whenever we put something to account, accounts receivable, we will need a customer. We don't have a customer field here, but if we select the split item, then we have a customer field and remember that customer was string music i believe we could we could type that in there string music tab and there it is so there's the 300 to string music and we're going to go ahead and record that and in essence this will create a journal entry meaning we're going to do this to this account the unearned revenue and then quickbooks is going to say okay the other account's going to be accounts receivable so quickbooks is going to do what it needs to do here and apply the other side, the other debit or credit to the other side. And we just need to go in and see if it does what we expect it to do then, what we want it to do, and see if we went the correct way with this transaction. What do we want it to do? We would like to see the unearned revenue go to zero as of 3-1. And as of that same date, we would like to see the accounts receivable related to string guitar go back to where it was, meaning we owe string guitar having a negative receivable. Let's see if that happens. If we go to the balance sheet up top, back in the open window section, scroll down to the liabilities, we still see this unearned revenue here because we're still at this same date range. But if we make the date range change, in essence, if we go back up to the customized report and change this end date 
to the next month, 03, 31, 21, and then, and then close this back out, we can then see that it goes away. Why? Because if we go back to the open windows, it's now at a zero balance and therefore not showing up on the financial statements. Going back to the balance sheet, if we scroll up to the accounts receivable, if we double click on that activity and scroll down, we see that uh, we have the 300 here and we have the 300 there. This 300 being our adjusting entry and this 300 being the reversal of that adjusting entry, uh, making us get back to where we originally were. In order to see more context of that, we can go to the customer balance uh, detail over here, scrolling down to that customer. We see that here is the payment. Here's us making it correct, reducing that payment back down to zero as of the end of the, of the month, the financial statement date. And then here's us putting us back to that original negative 300 that String Music now owes us back to the original point we were at prior to the adjustment.